Uh, dear colleagues, dear Confluence, thank you very much uh, for the chance that I can be here in front of you today and address you at this conference. This is a privilege that I can owe to Mr. Shailas Lokopany and tonight Dinesh, a privilege that I might not even deserve, but I try to, to do my best with my bit crappy English. I'm so sorry for that. So this is going to be the rough layout of my, of my speech. It's quite a numerous things, but it's, I have proportioned these things into five main chapters, and I'm hopefully I'm going to be able to go through these five chapters. First of all, let's start with this so-called eco-regional architecture. The story behind eco-regional architecture is that in 2008, uh, 2018 and 2019, the um, um, Institute of Research Institute of Art Theory and Art Methodology has invited uh, have, uh, uh, architects, Hungarian-born architects from outside the Hungarian borders, from Slovakia, from Austria, uh, from, of course, Transylvania, and we asked them to give lectures for for the Hungarian public, not only for professionals, but for, for, for the public interest, uh, to give lectures through which they can prove somehow the double cultural identity, saying that they have a certain Hungarian background and yet they live outside the Hungarian borders. And we wanted to know if this double identity is reflected in the houses or not. And during this lecture, seven of these architects were coming from, from Transylvania, namely Tövisi Zsolt, uh, Macalik Arnold, Török Áron, Korodi Szabolcs, I, the family name is first, uh, it's, it will be opposite in English, Kozma Zsolt, um, um, yes, again, Kölő Miklós, and Nemes Károly, and six of them were designing very, very similar houses to each other. By similar, I mean that these houses were not er only referring to the local context, to the local architectural, cultural, to the local um, 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 geography, sun, wind, and other type of uh, topological uh, um, 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 context, but uh, they were referring to each other. And more importantly, these houses seem to be independent from the architectural movements of the Hungarian scene. And even more importantly, these new types of houses were, were seem to be also independent from the heritage of Koshkaroy, which is quite crucial to say amongst friends uh, from, from Transylvania. But keeping Koshkaroy legacy as a very important heritage, these houses tried not to repeat the forms of Koshkaroy, but somehow tried to create a new type of architecture, a type of architecture which is f independent from the Hungarian scene and independent from, 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 from their own history. Here I've got to make, uh, open up a small bracket or, or make a, a footnote. Uh, if anyone wants to write the history of the contemporary Transylvanian architecture, one one could say that the first chapter is definitely is coming from Imre Makovets. Imre Makovets is definitely is one of the most influential international and local Hungarian architects, and his influence was even more stronger in Transylvania, where he could show a livable and, and followable way for the local architects um, to answer the question what Hungarian architecture is. And therefore, the first chapter in the, in the, in the Transylvanian architecture is, is a kind of organic architecture, Hungarian organic architecture. And I think it's a huge step uh, from, from, from the part of the, the local scene that they could step out of the very influential and very rich shadow of Imre Makovac, but still, somehow, it was a Hungarian shadow. And from this point, we can talk about uh, contemporary uh, Transylvanian architecture. For the ones who might, uh, would not know who where, where secular land is, this is the whole part of this map is Transylvania, more or less. This is in the middle, you can find the secular land. And the houses that has been showed by the architects I've mentioned, I've, I've, I've mentioned before were basically coming from this region uh, um, uh, of the country. Of course, at the Institute, we were very enthusiastic about this new phenomena, and we organized um, um, and uh, 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 launched a survey on these houses. We visited 80 plus houses in 80 different locations. Here you can see on the map, and, uh, and, uh, and conducted um, interviews with the architects. And this documentation is probably would, publish, uh, would be published soon in, the, in, in this year or in the, in the next year. And um, 
the reason why we call this eco-regional architecture was that it seemed that this type of architecture, what I'm going to talk about in a, in, in a very short sentence, is are not only concentrating on the, on the local geographical um, uh, um, uh, context of, of the secular land, but tries to, to somehow embrace and adopt the ecological and the other sociological um, uh, circumstances of, of the given community, of the workers and, 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 and the clients. If we say, if I say that this is a new type of contemporary architecture, anyone who says that, it, it, that, that sentence comes with a very difficult task. Uh, and this task is that you've got to be able to point out the first one. Because if you say that now we've got a new contemporary architecture, and 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, there hasn't been any new type of contemporary architecture in the region, there has got to be a first one from which you count the era of this new type of uh, uh, contemporary architecture. Um, this first house, actually these, are th these two first ones, were designed by Tobi Shijod and his colleague Marty Zoltan. Uh, this old belfry at the at the courtyard of an old uh, at the at the at, at, at the sorry um, um, a retirement home in Georgeni, and the second one is a funeral home in also in Djurgjuramete. These two houses were highly praised by not only the local Hungarian architects but also the Roman Romanian architectural scene, and both houses were awarded by uh, by national prizes from the National Chamber of the, of the Architects. And that was something very, very important for, for the local architects, because these two houses were proved for the local, especially young architects, that it's worth doing new type of architecture in Transylvania. It is OK to be Hungarian. It is OK to be local. And this is highly appreciated, as it turned out, from the Romanian uh, architectural scene. And it's still highly appreciated uh, by the Romanian colleagues. So these, are, these ha two houses seem to be the first two houses which are more or less independent from the Hungarian scene, more or less independent uh, from Koshkaro's heritage, <coughs> and more or less independent from, 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 uh, from the influence of uh, Imre Mokovac, which also resulted in beautiful, beautiful, beautiful houses and constructions in, the, in, the, in, in, in Transylvania. But still, we could label it as a Mokovician, as an organic architecture. Okay. When we talk about a, a folk architecture and the influence of folk architecture, of the folk architecture, folk architecture on, on, on contemporary architecture and on the modern architecture, it's almost a torture cliche to say that, okay, um, folk, architect folk architecture is, of course, is the basic of everything. But when you come to the concrete examples, the solid examples, you sometimes you, it's, it's becoming very difficult to point out the real points, the real connections between old and new. It's very, it's very easy to say this type of almost logic cliche that everything's based on, on the folk architecture, but, but, it's, but, it's, but it's difficult to point out in its, in its, in its reality. The, the why uh, we were very lucky uh, during this uh, 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 research project is that it turned out the, the barns, amongst many, many other factors, the barns were playing a crucial role in the, in the self-organization of this new type of eco-regional architecture. Because if you take a look, good look at the barns, it turns out that the barn is an archetype. By architectural archetype, I mean a function, an architectural phenomena, in which the function and the form is inextricably intertwined with each other. So it means that from the form I realize the function, and if I say the function, I immediately can associate a form of it. For instance, let's say I say Greek theater. All of you could imagine a Greek theater immediately. I would say amphitheater. We all know how an amphitheater looks like. I say ancient house, ancient peasant house. We all think about the gable, uh, uh, the roof, the pitched roof, uh, and this very quiet form. So this is the very same uh, with the barns which are very important, almost urbanistically important organizing elements in the, in the body of the, of the village. Secondly, the, arc, the, the, the volume of the, of the barn is stereometric. It means that the short side and the long side of, a volume, long side of, of this volume are equally stereometrical. 
equally symmetrical, so they are symmetrical from, from both sides, but this symmetry is not too rigid. It means that, uh, that it can be melted itself into a slight asymmetry according to the functional needs. It means that a barn is never pressing itself, if as such can do, as such thing uh, like pressing, it never obeys itself to a rigid geometrical idea, but the geometry always follows in a way the, the functional requirements. So that allows a little bit of uh, asymmetry which enriches the whole compositions without any, without this surplus need of being composed of, of, the, of the composition. These are, by the way, these are the barns uh, uh, refurbishments designed by our colleagues, Jozu uh, Estein, and uh, all the pictures that you can see I was, I was taken by me. Um, the, the other um, um, characteristic of the barn is, it is that it can be described with the homogeneity of the forms. By the homogeneity of the forms, I mean that the basic form, the basic formal elements of which the barn is uh, built itself up are also very simple, also very recognizable, and make a very self-evident architecture in the landscape, but the self-evident architecture doesn't become too complicated, too concurring with the nature, or in the topographical or geo complex geographical uh, con context uh, around them. Please, may I drink a bit of water, because I'm nervous, and I, I feel that I am very... Okay, thank you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. mm. Much better. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, also, you, you can you can you can see a certain homogeneity of the surfaces, which means that only a very few materials are used to make a very material-like, very structured, but very simple surface-like uh, appearance of the barns. Maybe these aspects are a bit synonym of each other, but I was so happy that, that I could, that I could theorize somehow the connection between old and new that I was, I was maybe I was repeating myself a bit. Uh, also, the materiality is homogeneous. Uh, we can find only three different materials, namely wood or timber, sometimes um, um, a ties on the roof, but in the poorer regions there, there are no ties at all, only shingle. And maybe if the animals were uh, living together, living also in the barn, the part where the animals were living were constructed from brick and they were plastered. And that's all. So brick or plaster, wood and tile. And maybe the tile was missing. This is something very, very homogeneous. Interestingly enough, from the inside, uh, the, the, the barn is transparent because you need these constructional gaps because if you nail the timber too tight to each other, it's going to destroy itself up because it's moving in the, humi in the humidity of the air. So you need this uh, slight, uh, very narrow um, constructional gaps. And due to these constructional gaps from the outside, the barn seems to be a very solid form. But from the inside, you can see um, uh, the changing of the nature. You can see the very rich play of the light in the inside, in the inside which comes from, from, from outside. Um, also, we can, we, can, uh, we, can, we can see that the joints or the nodes, in architecture we call, I'm sorry, did I explain because not all of us are architects. In architecture, the nodes and the joints, in general, when two different materials or two different forms are, are meeting each other. And uh, for instance, this is, for instance, sorry, I'm going back. Uh, this is a joint, this is a joint. Everything is a joint where two different things are meeting each other. No matter if it's formal, no matter if it's structural, no matter if it's material. But what, can, what we can see here, that the joints um, 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 are composed with the use of the geometry, not with the use of a third material. For instance, here at the gable, you can see this little overflowing of, of, of the timbers uh, at the gable. And the reason behind it is that it keeps from the dripping grain uh, the, the structure down below. 
in modern architects would create um, a joint with, a, with the use of um, um, a tin, with the use of, of uh, with the use of, of a little metal plate. So we would use a third material. No, in the barns we we organized everything. Sorry, our ancestors organized everything with the use of the of the geometry. No matter how simple and obvious and 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 homogeneous uh, the barn seems from the outside. Uh, the interior is is surprisingly complex in the inside. We need this uh, uh, interior com interior complexity because uh, during the year they have got to move the hay from from one place to another to keep the hay from the rotting to be able to feed the animals with relatively fresh hay through a uh, year long. And for that, as you can see, here we can find a small interior place, but above that, a double haze interior place. So it's surprisingly um, complex and rich, uh, this seemingly very simple form uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in, in the inside. The barn, the, the center of the barn is the place where the chariots have chariots. Yes, the carts and the chariots have stopped. Uh, have, have stopped. So um, this is the central place where all the uh, other additional places are opening in the inside. And there are two gates which are opened to the to the to the to the backyards and opened to the elet or the front yard or for the garden, as uh, Anthony called the front garden of uh, of the yard. When we open up, sorry, when they open up both of the gates, we get first of all an interim space, and then it will turn out that the whole space of the barn is becoming one transitory place. When the become is when when the barn is losing its original spatial structure and becoming and becomes in itself a gate in between the outer of lands and in between uh, the, 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 the inside land, land, the gardens. And I think this is something very remarkable because we only rarely find a, 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 a building or a type of function in modern architecture which could equally function as a normal functioning um, uh, house and with opening its gates then it could function as a gate. So this is something very unique. It was unknowingly, of course, uh, uh, was, was, was invented many, many centuries uh, ago. Although, if, although every barn is a bit different from each other, we can say that the proportions are crystallized. And this, these crystallized proportions gives us the sense that somehow these barns are timeless. Although this very special barn was built, I don't know, not more than 50 years ago, um, uh, around, the two, uh, around the, the 1980s, 19, 1990s. Um, beside all that, we can talk about an interesting uh, composition of surface architecture. By surface architecture, I mean that um, the, the layout of the roof, the layout of the gable, the layout of the structural wall, although they have different function, even in, 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 in constructional terms, but still somehow they act as a surface. The whole composition is looking like as if it were composed with different surface materials, with different, uh, with different um, 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 planes. Yes. Um, therefore, it is super interesting, at least to me, that still the structure and the cladding is very well differentiated from each other. As you can see here, uh, the lower part of, of, um, of this, uh, of this uh, the lower part of this image, you can see the structure using beam, and here you can see uh, the timber uh, as as uh, as as a normal cladding, and from the outside, seemingly, hoppa, I've done something wrong. Yes, good. And although from the outside it seems that um, that 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 the the outlook of the barn the appearance of the barn is very homogeneous from the inside you can say that it's quite complex uh, quite complex in in the terms of 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 of, um, of of construction if we pull these things together add these things together that the barn is an archetype is a geometric volume geometric joints etc 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 we will find out that this is a list 
of the elements from the elements of the current uh, contemporary architecture. And if you want to even take a step closer, one might could say that these are the elements of the current minimal architecture to have very simple forms, very simple voids, and very simple masses using geometry to create joints and nodes and uh, to keep um, um, the, the composition as evident as it can be. That's why I think that this is a very, very self-evident architecture. I mean, what the barns are representing today for us. Let's see a few examples. Uh, Pastor István, Szénási Zsolt, Tímár László, the members of Blips, they made the Oroszhegyi community barn. They purposefully call this house a barn. This is an, 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 a dreamlike, beautiful, beautiful open space uh, uh, at, at the meadows of Oroszhegy. The community needed a house where they could come together and they could talk about their the, 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 the problems and they could celebrate uh, their own, own, own celebrations. And uh, these young architects were purposefully going back to the examples of the barns and the compositions of the barns. And even in the name, they repeat uh, uh, the barns because they call this house uh, in a contemporary way, uh, community barn. So each and every each and every detail, each and every, every, every aspect uh, of this house is somehow a new uh, contemporary interpretations, interpretations, all the conclusions of what can be drawn from, from the aesthetics and, 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 the, and, the, and the constructional um, uh, composition uh, of the barns. Another example, this is something very huge, Altus Hotel at Poraid. Uh, Poraid is a touristic center. And uh, the young architect's uh, wife and husband got the um, um, uh, commission to make a huge hotel into the fabric of the city. And uh, they knew that they not, cannot hide such a huge volume uh, in, the, in, the, in this uh, village uh, um, uh, surrounding. But they tried to put the back, back um, um, uh, wing of the hotel to the original place of the ever existed barns. Unfortunately, in this uh, village, Parade, the old bars have been disappeared, but somehow they wanted to reconstruct the, the memory, uh, the, the topographical memory of the barns with the fact that they put uh, the back wing uh, into the old uh, places uh, of, the, of, 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 of the barns. Maybe the, maybe the most uh, beautiful example is coming from Lurins Barna, in Cheek St. Lelac, this is his own house. Uh, he built the, this uh, uh, family house um, in, in his own yard, and he put uh, this house in the right in the middle of the, on, of the construction site, uh, so he could divide uh, the construction site into two places, a fore garden and into a back garden, just like in the old times the barn did uh, with, with, the, with, the, with the gardens of the, of the villagers. And as you can see, the size of the barns, which were relatively, the, the, besides the churches, of course, uh, much, much bigger than the, than the sizes of the family houses in the, in the, in the secular uh, architectural landscape. This size was, was, was suitable to embrace and to place all the new types of functions, which functions are required nowadays to create a modern living environment bathroom, jacuzzi, um, um, internet cable, uh, um, complex spaces, um, uh, well-used and usable staircases, etc., etc., etc. All the types of functions which are missing, necessarily missing from a, from a peasant house and functions which cannot be pressed into the, into the, into the dimensions of an, of an old, old peasant house. To me, this is one of the most inspiring examples of how the old is, uh, is, um, is uh, fertilizing and, and helping uh, the creation of a new something which was, hasn't been seen um, uh, uh, before. And uh, finally, not finally, I love this house very much. 
And finally, uh, one of the members of the, of the, of the youngest generation, Dénias Peter, he bought his uh, house uh, to, to, to his own uh, um, 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 uh, sister. And in this case, um, uh, uh, the family had an old house um, which, was, which was at the front of, of the side and uh, they wanted to, to add new functions uh, to this old house. So the strategy was that they refurbished the old house and didn't deal with the problem that the old house is not suitable, not, not, not good for, for uh, to, to, not, not, um, to, yes, to, to host uh, the, the new, uh, new functions which, is, which are required uh, of a, of, 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 from a modern house. Um, therefore, therefore uh, Danish Peter repeated the size of the barn at the back of the old house and he put the, the center point of the eyelet of the, of, the, of the yard into this place, a kind of interim zone in between the old barns and old barn and the new house. And the new house is... Um, like an abstract cube is repeating the, the volume and the mass of the barn, but still is hiding itself from the, from the curious views of the street because it is at the back, it hardly can be seen uh, from the street. And with this gesture, he not only, he doesn't only um, makes, uh, designs a new beautiful house which could be even even in, which could have been built even in Austria, but, but, but outlines a new strategy in which new strategy, the, strategy, the barn is becoming the new center, or the new uh, organizer of the space in the outside of the, of, the, of, the, of, of the garden. A few images from the inside, and this is the image I wanted to show you, that here in the image you can see that the new house, the addition of the house, is communicating not in this direction, not to the side direction of the yard, but uh, towards the direction of the barn, creating a new, very closed uh, opener space. But this opener space can be considered as an extra room because it has very, very solid space was created by the new addition and created by equally by the by the by the old 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 barns. And uh, after this, as, um, as my, my final statement, or this final chapter, of course, that was not that simple. When Kölö Miklos, one of the, one of the uh, aforementioned uh, architects, designed his own house in Diagyo uh, Chumafava, he had also uh, the desire to design for himself a new barn, and he said that he thinks that a new barn cannot be de designed uh, in Seclaran because it is so old and it's so crystallized that his own, the barn that his own grandfather had been built is just perfect for the purpose. So he didn't do anything. He didn't destroy the old barn, but he tried to refunction the old barn. And the refunction was that he bought animals, cows and, 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 and horses, and he used the barn as it should use for an agricultural purposes. For another example, even, even more sharp or even more critical situation uh, from Tevis Cijolt. In, in Chik Park Falfa, when he um, uh, refurbished and renovated um, and enlarged his own family house, that was the old house. And this is the, the, the addition of the old house. First, he wanted to destroy the barn, which is situated here at the street. And there is an article uh, published in a Hungarian newspaper called Metzet, written in 1998 or 1999, and he writes that his first instinct was to destroy this building, this barn here, because it's not necessary. And it, even him, who's one of the founding fathers of the so-called eco-regionalist architecture in Transylvania, even him took a few years to realize that the, the solution is not destroying the barn, but somehow taking the time to find a new way to, to, to use it. And uh, a few years later, he refurbished the barns and, barn, and he, 
actually, I'm not sure what he's doing inside the barn. I'm maybe Jews are going to tell me uh, this, this answer because he didn't let us in when we were there. But the barn stayed at the place and he, he by keeping the barn its own place, he didn't... Um, didn't break uh, the 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 rhythm, the volume rhythm, the architecture rhythm of the of the of the of the whole village. The reason why I show you this um, this uh, example is that that story to keep the barns as architectural source, to use the barns as a kind of uh, inspirational form, to realize that it was not e not easy, not even easy from the architects themselves who are now uh, counts to be the leading figures of this so-called eco-regionalist architecture. Thank you, thank you very much for, for, your, for, for your kind attention. That was all that I wanted to bring you.